Good evening, sports fans, and welcome to another TV Party Tonight Extra Live Commentary. Tonight, myself and the punchy pugilist Mr. Toxic Masculinity, Pat Mullen, will be doing a live commentary of Premier Boxing Championships, Keep Thurman versus Josecito Lopez. And now, here's our uh, expert on the panel, the... Uh, my co-host, Mr. Pat Mullen. How do you do, sir? Good evening, everybody. For a fight like this, for a night like this, only in America. <laughs> only in America. So Keith, Keith, Thurman, Keith, Keith Thurman has had quite the layoff. Uh, from what I've been reading, I, I ran through a few articles on ESPN and some other uh, boxing periodicals. He did not want to jump back into the deep end of the welterweight pool. He wanted to get a tune-up fight or two under his belt for 2019 before he took on some serious competition. Hence, Josecito Lopez got the nod to step into the ring. Um, let me ask you a question first, Pat. This is, I believe, the first time Premier Boxing Championships is going to air on what used to be the, as far as combat sports were concerned, the exclusive purview of the UFC on Fox proper. The UFC is now signed with ESPN, and that left an opening for Premier Boxing Championship to move to Big Fox. What do you think of this uh, Premier card, this Premier fight? Why not jump on it? You have in Keith Thurman, a guy who's done fairly strong ratings, for his past PBC bouts on Fox, uh, I believe his fight with uh, with Robert Guerrero, which was the first PBC broadcast main event, did over 4.5 million viewers, which is the most viewed fight since 1998 on a non-HBO or Showtime telecast. PBC, uh, formerly known for having shows on NBC in primetime, NBC Sports, uh, Fox Sports 1 or Fox Sports 2, uh, the occasional ESPN, but what I knew them for was when Spike TV, when that was a thing, uh, was advertising their Friday night fights lineup, and it was uh, it was the Bellator Pro Premier Boxing Championships and uh, Kickboxing. Well, unfortunately, Spike has now gone away and is now the Paramount Network, and they seem to have decided to divorce themselves from combat sports. So I'm glad Premier Boxing Championship has found a home. Uh, the on the occasional Saturday night on Big Fox. Yeah, it's a good thing. It'll be exposure for a lot of guys. It'll help full avoid, hopefully. And this is a good fight. So talk to me about... Uh, now, what happened to Keith Thurman? I believe he had a series of injuries that kept him out for about two years. Is that right? A little over a year. Multiple injuries to both his hand and his elbow. Uh, he's had surgery on his right elbow. Said he had a hand issue prior to... Uh, uh, his last uh, fight, but he wants to be healthy, seems to be healthy, and that's why he took this fight. What do you think about his opponent, Josecito Lopez? This is an opportunity for him to win a belt. This is for the, I believe, the WBA welterweight, uh, super welterweight title. Uh, if he wins, now he's the dark horse here for sure, but uh, they, they're talking as if he actually has a chance here to take on a ring rusty Keith Thurman. What are your thoughts there, Pat? Let me John Gruden here for a minute. I love the Riverside Rocky, Josecito Lopez. Uh, I am a really big fan of this guy. He made his big splash when he beat uh, Victor Ortiz a few years back when Ortiz was being penciled in as the big opponent for Canelo Alvarez in a, what was supposed to be a pay-per-view clash. Josecito Lopez won via toughness and just heart. Now tough Ortiz broke his jaw. His, and that was when he stepped up and weight in short notice. Fought Canelo, put up a brave effort, but was blown out by a much bigger man. Uh, fought Marcos Maidana right after that, another big puncher. Lopez is not a big puncher himself. He's not exceptional in any way other than if you measure his heart. And that's why he's always going to be a dangerous opponent. He doesn't quit, he doesn't give up, and he doesn't get discouraged very easily. And while he's been knocked out by these guys, he's a tough guy to stop because only the very biggest punchers have gotten to him. All right, and we're going to go to ringside now with our fight in progress. We are just 15 seconds into round one. Uh, Keith Thurman's flicking that jab out there. That's how you do it, buddy. 
What I'm looking for for Keith Thurman is if we're going to see see a return to form of one time Keith Thurman when he came up through the ranks as this devastating puncher with this great right hand and was knocking out everybody left and right in five and four of his last five bouts and especially since he stepped up his level of opposition to people like Sean Porter and Danny Garcia, we've seen Thurman take a more defensive approach. He's fighting off the back foot. He's using his jab. He's moving away. And as a result, he's not sitting down on those punches, generating the same power. And there you see Lopez. Lopez will not give you breathing room. He's crowding Thurman. He's landed a couple of left hooks. Yeah, he was backing him up there pretty good. He was definitely uh, scoring some uh, scoring some uh, some punches there. Uh, not really giving Thurman a lot of room to breathe, as you said. And that might bring out the old one-time Keith Thurman. If you force the fight, Thurman may have to go back to his old ways of sitting down on those punches more. He threw a left hook, right hand combination there. About the best punches he's thrown this round so far. Stats up right now. There, Thurman just landed his fourth punch. Lopez had already landed four. Up, oh, Thurman has landed another, making it five to four. Uh, and Thurman goes to the see, body. Yeah, and so far, it's still the Keith Thurman we've seen where he seems a little more content to fight off of the back foot, more one at a time, and then maybe a flurry here or there and step away. I think if you're going to... Now, you know me. I'm always looking to see, you know, looking at marketability. You know, this is their first time on Big Fox. This is an opportunity here to step into a place where the UFC has stepped out of. A lot of eyes are, you know, may, might be on this product. You really want to put together an action fight. And so far, that's what we have here. You know, you're not seeing Keith Thurman, as the layman might say, running away from Josecito Lopez. Josecito Lopez is not just standing there taking punches. This looks to be pretty even so far. And, and for the casual viewer who's, you know, whose eyes you want to capture, so far this has been a fun fight. We're, I mean, we're only in round one here, but I, uh, I would not sleep on this one. No, these are action fighters. There's a reason that Lopez was brought in to be the opponent for Thurman and got away with a little bit of a low blow there along the ropes and he's going to be with caution for it. Uh, he, but that low blow was after a sharp right hand that just missed. Thurman trying to go down to the body early, that would be a good tactic. And he lands a nice little uppercut counter. Lopez swinging wildly at the bell, really going for it all on some of those right hands. Thurman able to pretty deftly avoid them. Uh, good opening round. I would give to Keith Thurman. Yeah, I would agree. He landed more punches. You know, obviously that the that work uh, that would obviously work well in his favor. Um, pretty easy round to score. Now, are you have you kept up with the evening's other fights? We had a heavyweight fight preceding this one. Polish powerhouse won. I in uh, early on in the fight, he knocked down the, his opponent. Uh, he got back up again, but. He just took more damage, and the ref said, enough's enough. You're not defending yourself. And then he had to sit down on the stool in the middle of the ring. So that was a pretty easy one. The first fight went all 12 rounds, and it went to, I'm going to massacre this guy's name, Nien Yamar. Yeah, that's close enough, Mark. I, I, look, at least I tried. It's not like the Metal Hammer of Doom where I'm purposely fucking up names. Yeah, yeah you may call him that. I know him as Burma. Fair enough. All right, round two. Here we go. And again, I, I'm curious to see if Lopez is going to be able to bring out a more aggressive side in Keith Thurman. You know, Lopez's aggressive tendencies, he doesn't utilize a ton of head movement. He is there to be hit more often than not. And that had to be something Keith Thurman's people were looking at in terms of bringing him in as a rehab fight of sorts for Keith before he goes for a big money fight in 2019. I wanted to ask you, if you're managing this fellow, Keith Thurman, is this the road you take? Do you, you know, do you take a guy like Josecito Lopez in a tune-up fight before you take on some real competition? Or do you jump back into the deep end, given the man's, you know, 30 uh, and not getting any younger? You know, I know that this is a, a mismatch on paper in certain respects. Lopez really is a career junior welterweight, only moved up to welterweight when money offers came his way. Um... But again, he's not a night off. This is going to be a hard night for Keith Thurman if he's not on his A game. If he's okay. on his A game, he'll he'll look like the star they predict him to be. So you you would not say Keith Thurman is running away from stiffer competition. You're saying that this is an an appropriate fight of a man for his uh, for a man his caliber. 
Yes, I would. All right. And we see Jacinto Lopez trying to back uh, Thurman into a corner. Thurman staying on his bicycle. Uh, he, he's still he's still fighting off that back foot. He's making Hosecito come to him, which is going to leave him available for counter punching. Uh, we'll see see and what there happens you, here. There you see the switching stance momentarily from Thurman. He does that from time to time. I don't like it because he does tend to square up and make himself much more hittable. And a guy who's a little bit faster on the draw is going to be able to use that to their advantage. Uh, Sean Porter hit him a couple times in those instances when they fought. And you see Thurman get off with the jab and get out of range. That's what it's a smart game plan to do tactically to against a guy like Lopez, who really can only beat you in a trench fight on the inside. Uh, which we see here now, Lopez a little bit getting his way, but Thurman's able to move, and Lopez does not cut him off. It looked like oh, Lo- 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 it looked like Lopez had clubbed him in the back of the head in one of their exchanges. Yeah, Josecito Lopez needs to do things like that. He needs to make this fight a little rougher, a little uglier. Needs to do things to frustrate Keith Thurman into drawing him into that kind of firefight. And he hasn't been able to do that yet. And part of it is that he's following Thurman yep. around the ring. He's not doing a good job cutting off, as we see there. Looks like he lost his balance. And no, no he got a... hit with a good clean left hook on the chin. Uh, okay. Yeah, I hope Thurman... I get to see that in a replay there because it looked like his leg just came right out from under him as if he had slipped in a puddle. Oh, there sure. we go. Now we're, we're swinging leather. Thurman did a great job walking him into it, and there he tries to land an overhand right, clips him again with the right. I thought Lopez's glove may have touched the canvas there, and a knockdown was not called. It would be interesting to see that. I think there's a clear 10-8 round for Thurman. What say you? Uh, based on the rules, absolutely. So you're in the, we're in the red corner now with Jacinto Lopez. I have it on mute. What do you think they're saying to him? I think they're telling him you need to stop walking into things and you need to stop <laughs> just walking in on him, period. You need to work your way in intelligently, move your head, jab with his jab, okay. and try to cut the ring off. There we see in the replay, you're absolutely right. He hit him in the bottom half of his jaw, and uh, and down he went. He takes one in the chest there, swing, boom, clean on the jaw, and yeah, his legs went right out from under him. That's a lesson, kids. If you can get him right on the button, the legs will follow. Yeah, double left hook there, but Thurman got to the point, and really the, the momentum plus Thurman's punch, great clean knockdown, good work by Keith Thurman there. And we're going to see how he starts this round off after a big finale to the last round. So for Keith Thurman, you know, after you know coming back from injury, you've got that ring rust. Right now, you're feeling pretty confident, I would imagine. You're feeling like, you know what, uh, this isn't going to be a walk in the park. You're not going to walk through this guy, but you're confident that you know that you can at least control the fight, take it all twelve rounds if you need to, and not give up many points. If there's a point of confidence, that knockdown is it, and I think that's really going to have Keith doing what he wants to do until Lopez really challenges him to change anything. Jose Josecito Lopez is going to have to make the adjustment here. And if he doesn't, what we're going to see is probably much more of this, picking the part with the jab by Thurman and then loading up every so often on a power shot and moving away. That's got to be discouraging if you're hosting Cito Lopez and, you know, and you're throwing these bombs and Thurman's just evading everything. I have to give credit where credit's due. Keith Thurman's defense tonight is, uh, is exactly where it should be. Yeah, but Lopez isn't really challenging him in that regard. He's throwing a lot of looping punches from the outside. He's not measuring the distance intelligently with his jab. And a lot of these things he's trying are in the middle of the ring where Thurman has a lot of room for movement. He's not pinning him on the ropes where he can limit where he's going. And he's not utilizing feints at all. He's throwing what he's throwing, and he just missed off the shoulder with a big right right hand. Uh, Keeping up with our... Uh, percentages here. We've got Thurman 39 landed to Lopez's 12. Which means he's throwing a lot of leather, but not landing much of anything. Yeah, a, a lot of what you're seeing L- Lopez almost land has been taken on the shoulders of Thurman at times, and there was a good right hand to the body by Thurman. I'd like to see him utilize that punch more as this fight goes on. Uh, we talk about Lopez being a tough guy. You can wear anybody down if you put enough money in the bank with those body shots early. 
and Thurman can throw a wicked right hand. You can't fight it, you can't breathe, that's for certain. <clears throat> All right, how Cedar Lopez is how... continuing the attack. Right, he threw this. He threw the same sequence of punches twice in a row. He did, uh, but uh, you know, if you land it once, you'll try it again. And that time, Thurman showing he's not, uh, he's not a dummy. He got out of the way of it and came back with a good left hook of his own. Lopez did have some marginal success there, going to the body with a left hand in the first combination and a right hand in the combination that preceded it. He has to do more of that. He has to, when Thurman stops and admires his work, start punching. And Thurman backs him up with a good left hook right hand combination, and the jab follows. And that's the end of the round. Yeah, I would say again, 10 9, Keith Thurman. Yeah, we're, we're just seeing right now a guy who is overmatched in terms of both skill and, and punching power, uh, and he's not able to find those keys where he can get in. And it's, it's a thing we've seen Josecito Lopez do before where he has upset guys in these situations. Upset Victor Ortiz. Upset up-and-coming Mike Dallas when they fought and took the decision from him. But he's already in the hole three rounds and four points. So if he's going to make something happen, he's got to do it now. And here we have an advertisement for The Passage, which I will not be watching. I'll give anything with Mark Paul Gossler a shot. Is he in this? Oh, He's yeah, the there he is. Look at that. Good for him. Can't stop MPG. <clears throat> I was telling my wife earlier that I really enjoy watching, from an aesthetic point of view, these premier boxing championship fights. You know, because I used to watch the old Friday night fights on ESPN and, you know, some of the uh, show, you know, show box or um, boxing after dark. And from a production standpoint, I mean, they're well lit and everything, but the mat looks like crap. Oh, Jesus Christ. They should stop talking about this for one second and call the fight. They are uh, throwing back and forth. A lot of high-speed punching going on here. And this is the fight Lopez needs, even if he takes these shots. He has to land something on Thurman to earn his respect. He got a good right hand in the sequence. Thurman landed a good right hand. But when Thurman tried to pull out of the exchange, he pulled out off balance. Lopez should have aggressed, and he didn't. Now Thurman has his feet set. He landed a good uppercut in that one that backed Lopez up. May have hurt him momentarily. Josecito has a good poker face, though, and he's kind of daring Thurman to come in at him a little bit more. Just to finish my thought here, uh, you know, Premier Boxing Championship, that's one of the things that they used to sell you know, sell themselves as a, mar as a boxing uh, marketer is that they go out of their way to make their fights look colorful and pretty on television. They want to make it seem like you're at, like, a, a concert or a WWE event, and I think they largely succeed in that. Certainly, over the some of the examples I gave earlier, which had a very bland look. I mean, I can only look at the mat that says Tiquete so many times. Yeah, th this production is very well done, and again, you see now what Lopez is doing is walking forward and stalking. He's not cutting off. He's not punching to make Keith Thurman move one way or another. He's just following. And Thurman's taking advantage. You see that right hand over the top of Lopez's jab. Thurman's able to pick his shots at this point, control distance, and get in and get out. They showed the graphic earlier. Thurman spent 97% of this fight at a distance. And one of the things he's looked for is that right uppercut this round. He landed one. He hasn't landed another, but he's looking for it through that uh, high guard of Josecito Lopez when he gets in close because you can see the split in the middle of the guard, and Lopez's head is still sitting on the center. So I heard earlier in the evening that Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder are, are not scheduled, but slated to fight each other again. How do you feel about that after the debacle we saw in the last fight? Uh, anybody who pays for that gets what they deserve. <laughs> and we, are, we may or may not bring you all that action right here on the Rattlers and Broadcasting Network in the future. I'll have to, I'll have to see what kind of uh, bribery I can get Pat uh, And to now Lopez to that. turns it on. He lands two good left hooks and a right hand. Backs Thurman up a bit. Now Thurman fighting back off the ropes. I tell you, we are four rounds into this, and Keith Thurman does not, I mean, as far as bruises or cuts or whatever, does not look like he's been in a fight. No, he doesn't, and that speaks to Lopez having only landed 21 punches through four rounds, where Thurman has almost quadrupled that rate and lands a couple at the bell here. Lopez did some of his best work in the fight in this round, 
The problem is that he was just outmatched in volume by Keith Thurman again. If he's going to initiate a firefight at the top of these rounds, he really has to then find a way to capitalize on it. Because I think that was working for him. But it's like he, he they get into this flurry, and then he stops. And then you're right. He gives Keith Thurman an opportunity to then square up. you know, And we're back to the same fight we've been watching. And, and if that doesn't change, yeah, he may give a little bit more, but he's going to take a lot more in return and still not win this fight. Here we see a replay of the fight, of the earlier firefight where Jose, where uh, uh, Esposito was uh, really turning on the aggression. Yeah, Jose Cito Lopez Esposito. Yeah, he, he he cupped him with that left hook behind the head that started it, and there he mixed it up with both hands and got in. Uh, it was his best rally of the fight, but it just was not enough to win the round for him, unfortunately. And let's see if Keith Thurman maybe makes some adjustments based on the modicum of success that Lopez saw in that round when he got ugly. Now you see Thurman a little bit more patient, working a stiffer jab, not so much a passive one like when he was trying to work at a distance. There's a little more sting in that jab as he starts. And we are in round five, ladies and gentlemen. You see Dan Birmingham being spoken to, the head trainer of Keith Thurman. Of course, Dan Birmingham made his reputation training. Winky Wright, who had one of the best jabs in boxing for a long time, the southpaw long right telephone pole jab, and he's tried to implement a very similar weapon in Thurman. Uh, but the back-footed Keith Thurman has not pressed that jab the way he used to. A lot of those jabs that he was throwing right there went straight into the forehead. And there we see the score. Uh, Hazard's unofficial scorecard. 40 to 35. Yeah, except, except for the second round where we had the knockdown, it was a 10 8. We have 10 9 for the uh, other three rounds, which is about right. About, no disagreement there. No, and you see again, Thurman poked that uppercut through the guard. There was not a lot of steam on that, but that's what you call a test the waters punch to see if you can get it through so that the next time you throw it, you throw it with bad intentions if you land it. My question to you is that uh, do you see this being 120 uh, to, uh, Cano to Canelo? <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I think every fight is 120 to Canelo, but the way it's going, <laughs> 120 to 107 at the moment, Keith Thurman is not out of line. And Thurman, again, just a lot of punches and bunches. Lopez will throw one, try to make a move, and Thurman backs away. <coughs> The biggest problem with fighting a guy who is not going to stand in front of you is what do you do to tire him out? You know, coming forward and putting pressure on him and making him use his legs, it works great if he's not in great shape, but you have to do other things. You have to make him punch. You have to faint. You have to land punches of your own, especially to the chest, to the body. Make him adjust to you and make him have to throw punches to keep you off of him. He Lopez has not forced that out of Keith Thurman yet. And you can see, Thurman gets to pick his spots and load up because Lopez is content to follow around Thurman's movement. He's not causing the movement of Thurman to be deliberate. And there he has him on the ropes momentarily, but just two punches off. The other thing is that what I've noticed throughout this fight is that any time he's, he's backed up Keith Thurman into the ropes, he doesn't press his advantage either and try to keep him there. And uh, meanwhile, Keith Thurman stays on his bicycle, and even though he's gliding against the ropes, he keeps it moving, and it, you know, it doesn't work to Hussacito's advantage at all. No, and Thurman landed a very good counter right hand off the ropes to end that exchange at the end of that round, which is yet another round in our books for Keith Thurman unofficially, mind you. Uh so at this point, we've got a shutout with the extra point for the knockdown. And Lopez is getting into territory where if he takes a particularly bad beating in a round, his corner may want to think about stopping this because on points, it's progressively getting away from a possibility of winning. And he hasn't shown that he can really hurt Keith Thurman at this point and potentially stop him. Coming up uh, next Saturday... On ESPN, I actually confirmed this earlier. We've got uh, Sergey Kovalev versus Eleanor Alvarez two. 
Uh, their first fight was, I believe, on HBO. This will be their yes. second go around, and uh, it'll be on ESPN. The entire card will be broadcast on ESPN Plus if you're one of the nuts who signed up for that. Uh, otherwise, you can watch the main event and maybe a prelim or two on ESPN at 10 p.m. 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Pat and, I, fight. Pat and I will be there to bring you all the action for the main event. Looking very forward to that one. Two outstanding light heavyweights, two guys with big punching power. Uh, should be excellent. Looking forward to it. And we're back here. It's round six. We have 91 to 25 landed punches, Thurman over Lopez. And if you look at the punch output, Thurman has tripled what Lopez has thrown. If you're a guy who's at a power disadvantage and trying to cut the ring off, you can't afford those types of numbers. You have to be busy. You have to be, you have to be working at all times. When Thurman is thinking and dipping, Lopez has to be punching, and he's not doing enough of that, as the stats would tell you clearly. Although there, he's finally doing a little bit of work more with some fainting along the ropes. He landed a, a short left hook, not a lot on it, but it did force Starman to adjust and move. You know, if you're uh, in Hustacito's corner, why not switch things up? Why not say, you know what, you're, you're, not, you're being outclassed. Why not ugly this up a bit? Keep tying him up. Throw, you know, throw, some, uh, throw some punches in the clinch. Don't let him get space from you. Oh, goodness gracious. As you say that, we get that particular act you see again. We see a little bit of flurrying on the ropes, some left hooks thrown, and Thurman just with a paint job afterward with a good left hand. Um, it, it's a lot easier said than done to go in there and just ugly the fight up, especially when someone's as disciplined as Keith Thurman right now and is able to correctly predict what's coming at him, evade it deftly and counter effectively to discourage Jose Cito from walking in on him, but... Again, this is the Lopez I talked about where he likes to get in there and you, you really aren't going to discourage him. He'll still throw mm -hmm. everything he has at you, and he's doing it here against Thurman and making this interesting a little bit in this round. There was a big looping punch straight out of uh, mixed martial arts there from Jose Zito. <laughs> it's funny, you know, I, the little bit of boxing and kickboxing I've done in my lifetime, I've never seen anyone encourage a windmill punch. Not unless you're in Chuck Liddell's corner. Good stinging right hand from Thurman there and another. I don't know if Lopez is seeing these right hands coming. And, you know, Thurman's landed some very good jabs along the forehead area we talked about. There's some swelling there that's starting to creep up on his eye. And there was a sequence there where Thurman landed about three right hands consecutively. And Lopez just didn't seem like he saw any of them coming. And there was a beautiful one at the end of the round, right over the top. And another, and a left hook behind it. Lopez is not seeing this right hand. And here we say replay of the end of the round there. Yep. <laughs> There's that big overhand right that mm -hmm. he did land. Uh, that one back Thurman up. He had some mustard on that one. Misses with the hook. Another miss with the counter. Again, Keith Thurman not looking too bad in the corner there. A little bit of Vaseline, a little bit of ice. He's doing all right. No cuts that I can see. Meanwhile, no, no cuts. Thurman not known to cut. Meanwhile, Hussizito has a little bit of blood in the forehead, a little bit of blood in the eye. Not looking very good at all. And, and again, I, I question if he's really seeing the right hand coming. There is some swelling around that eye now, and... You have to question his corner at this point. How much longer do they let this go on if he's going to keep getting hit like this? It does appear that the ringside doctor was in the Lopez corner to check his vision to see where his help is. We are at 112 to 38 as, to, as far as punches landed. Now 113. And fight starts right where Thurman wants it to. You notice the beginning of every round, Thurman makes it a point. He scoots out to the center of the ring to get there to control the action. that uppercut land that looked like to you? It did not land. It was well thrown. Uh, just missed and hit the inside of the glove. Okay. Yeah, it looked beautiful, though. Well, he's been looking for that punch. Because of the exploited nature of Lopez's guard, <clears throat> uh, Thurman really believes that's one he can do damage with. And 
again, Lopez having trouble finding him, can't keep him pinned in the corner, can't keep him pinned on the ropes, and he misses wide. And Thurman's going to continue utilizing that movement. He's he's clearly in shape. He's clearly put the miles in for this. And when you're not forcing somebody to throw and throw and throw and you let them be able to just kind of oh. hold position, oh, and there we Don't sit. let him out. Don't let him out. Keep him in the corner there, Hussazito. No, and, and out goes out goes Keith, who's dropping his hands right now, and he's on his bicycle, not afraid to take a punch from Josecito. But Josecito did his best work there, and whether Thurman admits it or not, he was hurt by that right hand, and he's coming forward. He lands another. This is a good work from this is good work from Lopez. This is an encouraging round that'll get him back in this fight. And again, oh, that left landed, that shook his jaw. Yeah, Thurman is hurt. He's on his bicycle. And he is hurt very clearly. This is Lopez putting it all forward. There we go. Now we're seeing something interesting. This is why they call him the Riverside Rocky. No matter how much you beat him up, he's never out. This is not looking good for Thurman. He's, ta- he's taking some pretty heavy shots this round. And you know, and he's moving around. He's not just sitting there taking it. But he, he you know, Hosecito has definitely landed some what bombs he, here. What Keith Thurman needs to do is stop moving. He needs to clinch and he needs to get his legs back under him. Because moving around like this when he's hurt is not going to help him long-term in the fight. He needs to tie Lopez up and stop this onslaught from happening because he is answering with nothing in return. He's in, with less than 30 you know, seconds, and I can't, I can't help but give this one to Lopez. 10-9. This is a big round for Josecito Lopez. Yeah, there was a couple of those where, you know, he, you know, he didn't get knocked down, but you could see him take one on the jaw and his eyes crossed. Yeah, Josecito Lopez, a big underdog coming into this fight for obvious reasons. Uh, three to one underdog, but he never fights knowing those odds, and he just defies them so many times that a round like that is not out of the question for him to have. Now let's see. This is going to be the interesting part. We haven't seen Keith Thurman hurt in a long time. We haven't seen him take damage like that in a long time, and he's coming off a long layoff. Is he going to have the strength and the confidence to move forward and fight effectively after that, and can he discourage Lopez from fighting Brave? I love that slow motion shot of his face because he got the wiggles there. And you see what he was doing there. He was setting up to throw that uppercut one more time, and Lopez just threw caution to the wind and launched that left hook as soon as he could. You see the other right, straight right hand that landed, snapped his head back. He landed a few of those when Thurman was in retreat mode. See another one here. Just short, but it got in on the chin. Good stiff jab followed. This was a great round for Josecito Lopez. He did what he needed to do. And it was mainly because Thurman got confident and stopped measuring the distance with his jab. He was not jabbing in this round effectively. Let Josecito Lopez walk in and took full advantage of it. And now we are beginning round eight. He can't win on points. I mean, at this point, he'd have to knock... Uh, Thurman down in every single round, even to come close, and you know, and without doing the math in my head, I don't even think that'd do it. But uh, he absolutely has an opportunity here if he can get his muster up to, uh, to possibly win this one by KO or TKO. He's not going to win it on points though at this juncture. He's not. He, he fell too far behind early on to get a points win here, but he needs to follow up. Now he ate a good little left hand from Thurman at the start of this round. And Thurman's legs are under him a little bit better. But there's that snap right hand again. Thurman back, pulled straight back, and Lopez snapped it back. Uh, The hazard card is up, and they agree with us. 10-9 for Lopez in round 7. And Lopez is finding a home for the sneak right hand. Thurman is exiting one step back and one step to his right, but there's one step to his left. There's a pause there, though, and Lopez is able to land that right hand. Though Thurman whipped a good two-punch counter and it opened up Lopez's nose. And you see blood now coming out of the nose of Josecito. Now, what do you think about, you know, when they cross that load, Pat? Because to me it looks like you're, 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 make, you're making it so that you're going to be easily pushed off balance when, when you're practically bent over that way. If your legs are solid, you can get away with it. <clears throat> 
you know, a guy like Pernell Whitaker who made his, his defensive skills through breakdance fighting with how low he could get just his hips and move. You train to do things like that. You have to have a solid core and a solid base with your legs. Uh, it is dangerous based on if a guy just wants to knock you over, he can by pushing you, kneeing, whatever he can do. But if you can get away with it, you get away with it. And I, I still think Lopez has fought an effective round here. Thurman's punches, they don't have that same snap in them. They're, they're much more defensively minded punches uh, just to try to maybe keep Lopez aware that he can still punch back. You know, despite having clearly put in the road work, do you think part of the problem for, for Thurman is this late in the game he's starting to blow up a little bit? You know, I don't think that's it. I think he really just he got lazy and he got caught. And relying on this style, it's not one where he's utilized a lot of head movement and a lot of quick cuts and upper body movement. It's mainly just a distance defense. All right, starting to back up into the corner there. Hosito, nope, out of time. And he got a good left hand in at the end of that round. One of the last solid connections in that round. I also, I'm going to give Lopez that round as well, um, mainly because, like I said, Thurman landed punches, but they were not solid punches. And it's more the type of style we've criticized him for in his recent fights where he's not sitting down on things. He's throwing off the back foot. And much like a quarterback, almost, when you throw off the foot, that back foot, it, it doesn't have the same velocity. It doesn't have that same snap. So it's essentially throwing an arm punch. And sometimes they look nice, and they'll make a nice sound where the glove lands, but it's not powerful. It's not a, a good, solid scoring blow the way the punches Lopez threw were. And there you saw the replay. That lead right hand that Thurman walks into, he steps one step back, pause, one step to his left, and when you step to your own left, you open yourself up to the potential of being hit with your opponent's right hand, especially if your guard is not responsible or your head is on the center line. Hey, we are in round nine. Hustito Lopez opened up with a uh, with a punch just right over the head. Keith Thurman ducked right underneath it. <clears throat> Thurman scores with a blow to the body. Now starting to attack the head. Josecito Lopez dips, <laughs> gearing up to throw some more power punches, trying to uh, see if he can break Keith Thurman down. Mark, look at when Keith Thurman does throw those body shots after a jab, though, and you look at the placement of his feet. They're, they're not set all the way. He's looking to touch him and move, almost amateur style. So at this point, <clears throat> to uh, <laughs> carry a phrase over from a, from a particularly funny uh, UFC fight, he's coasting to victory. You know, he knows he's up on point. He just has to survive at this point to the end of this fight, and he's got it made in the shade, I would imagine. So keep landing punches. Don't go for a knockout. Try not to let yourself get killed. He has the ability, although he's still trying to fight as much as he can, and still get his legs under him and avoid those counter punches from Lopez. He did land one good little sneak right hand around the guard. Not a tremendous amount behind it, but it was a solid punch compared to what he's been throwing. I mean, not for nothing, but at this point, you know, again, the the object here is not to, it, for him, is to is to get the ring rust off. Uh, you, you, you know you've won the fight on points. Why take chances? I mean, look, do I want to see him go balls out and try to knock this guy out? Oh, Absolutely. But I'm thinking from his point of view, I'm, you know, I'm sure he'd like to limit the amount of damage that he takes, get through the fight, you know, and move on with his life. Now, Lopez has landed two good, real good left hooks to the body, and the problem is he's throwing them wide. We're going to see if he looks for that punch again, if Thurman's able to sneak that right hand in right before he pulls the trigger on uh, the left hook. Jose Cito Lopez is eating punches now. Yeah, Thurman's now now he's throwing those quick combinations. There's the right uppercut that got him in trouble. Uh, Lopez tries to fight back, and that's what he's got to do. He's got to crowd him on the ropes, and instead he's letting Thurman take two steps forward to get off. And now we're back in the center of the ring. Lopez got away with a good little low blow there. I think he landed a hook that shook uh, Thurman up a little bit, but... Oh. 
Thurman back on his bicycle. Still got and a lot of pep Lopez in those again. legs. But now Lopez has some confidence because he knows he can hurt Keith Thurman. I'm, I, he landed some good punches here. I think Thurman's work rate does give him this round, and he did land some solid counters. There was one particularly good left hook he landed against Josecito. Even though Josecito closed strong in the last 30 seconds, I think Thurman did enough to win that round and rebound. Strategy-wise, I'm not sure if Josecito Lopez wouldn't have been better off trying to focus more on Keith Thurman's body. You know, break up those ribs a little bit, make it a little harder for him to breathe. Uh, you know, limit the amount of energy he's got to be bouncing around the ring that he has using evasion as his main defensive technique. Yeah, if you want to take a guy's legs away, you have to work to his body. You have to do what you can to get that going. That's something we did not see enough of from Lopez through the early part of this fight. No, he clearly went in this went into this fight, you know, thinking the bright lights in the big city are on me. I'm going to knock this guy out. Whereas, where as I said, and then you know, you you added in as well. He really should have been focused on the body. And you know, you combine that method with his success that he has had at times. We could be seeing a different fight had he played it a little bit differently. Because the one question was, you know, Jose Cito Lopez, part of why I guarantee they brought him in was they didn't necessarily fear him as a puncher. But he's shown he does have the ability to hurt Keith Thurman. We are in round 10 here. That last round was a draw round. What do you think about that, Pat? I think it even rounds a fair score there. Uh, you know, you had Thurman's activity, a couple of good solid shots, a very strong close from Jose Cito Lopez. It's a tough round to score. Uh, ultimately, I gave him a round to Thurman. I could see either guy winning that round on the card. So I think a, a draw from Larry Hazard is more than fair. And now you see, again, Thurman doesn't have the movement there. He looks like he's trying to load up for a counter shot. But Lopez, Lopez is still working. He's still pressing forward. And he's looking for that one hook that's going to land that will hurt Thurman again. Looked like he uh, he stepped to the right and then threw around with his left there, as and Keith moved right into it. He did. He had a defensive guard up, which was responsible, and he answered with a little bit of a check hook. Um, not much on it because he was moving at the time it was thrown. But what what's funny is Lopez has actually gotten more defensively responsible the more success he's had. You saw him pick off a lot of the punches that Carmen's thrown on his gloves on their way in. And there's a good right hand to the body. That's the best punch of the round so far by Lopez. Keith followed up with a punch that landed right in the lips there. Didn't didn't go, didn't follow through, but did tap him. He did, but again, the movement and the the feet you're looking at when Keith Thurman punches. Right. And he's not really setting. And you look at the, the He's not turning his body into his right hand when he throws it. This is an entirely defensive effort. And look at Lopez open up now. Thurman, Thurman got a hook in. But, man, he's not turning on those punches on the inside. They're really more just get-off-me punches more than anything else. And he, he's not discouraging Lopez from coming forward. That's... No. That's the problem, and that's how you know those punches from Thurman. There's not a lot on them because Lopez is still just marching forward without any respect for Thurman's power. Unlike earlier in the fight, he landed a good little left hook under there when Thurman tried to dip. you got to imagine this late in the game, though. Some of the mustard has definitely come out of those punches just by sheer exhaustion. And I, I, think, I think Lopez got the better of the exchange on the ropes. I think the best punch of that exchange was a left hook to the body that Lopez landed. And that was enough for me to give him the round. I would never buy a Mitsubishi. They feel I feel like they're shit cars. Uh, for, those, for those not actually getting to actively watch the fight, we're seeing that Jose Cito Lopez is sponsored by a uh, Mitsubishi dealership in his hometown. And yep. I would concur with Mark. 
Uh, though I'm not an advocate of buying American either, unless you're buying Dodge. Oh no! Don't get me wrong. I have a Toyota, and I keep telling yeah, Melissa. So do I. I. I keep telling Melissa when we buy her a brand new car because she's all, she's had nothing but used cars since uh, since she gave up her Beetle. Uh, that you know, her next car, whatever it is, it's going to be a Toyota. Cause oh, what a feeling! All right, here we Toyota's, go. Toyotas are who should sponsor Jose Lo- Jose Cito Lopez because they're really impossible to kill. That's right. Round 11, here we go. Championship rounds in play. Think Gavin's at home watching this tonight? No. No, I don't. That's unfortunate. All right, so... You know, and and it's interesting when we see the punch that totals 205 to 95. However, you know, at a certain point in time in this fight... Those punched at landed totals were four to one in ratio, which should tell you the work that Lopez has put in over the last three, four rounds of this fight. Right. He had some encouraging moments there that he just failed to capitalize on, or if he, you know, oof, those look like they shook uh, Hosezito. I think those, those are the punches Keith Herman's been waiting for. I think he waited to get his feet steady <clears throat> under him. And they were some good, solid shots. Those are the best punches we've seen Keith Thurman thrown since he's gotten hurt. I mean, to his credit, Husazito just sort of shook him off like he's the Hulk. But uh, they they definitely affected him. Yeah, those were good, solid shots that Keith Thurman threw. And I I think Thurman knows that he's in a fight. He's got to do a little bit more to really leave an exclamation point here. He doesn't want to finish, you know, on the back foot and leave some doubt on this. He wants to close strong and make a case for a big money fight. Percentage-wise, they're a little bit closer. It was 29% Thurman to Lopez's 23%, but the uh, the amount thrown and the amount thrown and yes. landed by by Thurman far exceeded Lopez. His output's been incredible this fight. You know, Thurman landed a good straight right hand, right uppercut combination, and they were sat down on, and Lopez walked right through it. And Thurman has sat down on his punches more, but as soon as Lopez connected, Thurman was on his bicycle again. It's very clear that Lopez is bothering Thurman almost Mm -hmm. every time he can hit him. Now, did you see that, Pat? He tied him up there, and then there were some dirty punches right in the body right before it was broken up. That's what Lopez has to do. Don't let Thurman Mm -hmm. clinch and get comfortable. Make him work. And that was a good straight right hand by Thurman out of that clinch. That made Lopez take a backward step for a moment. And a good combination there off the ropes and makes Lopez miss. Get, and, and this is where Lopez has to keep punching. If the referee is not going to break you, use that to your advantage. Punch, punch, punch. And there was a good right hand by Lopez off that exchange. Thurman with a good answer. So Thurman danced right out of that corner and it was halfway across the ring by the time Rosasito knew what was happening. Yeah, I think Lopez thought he was drawing him into the brawl there, but Thurman wasn't going to play that game. And I actually think that was a good round for Thurman. No, if you get Thurman at this point, there's no point in getting into a firefight. The fight's over. We're into the 12th round here. Um, <clears throat> at this point, I think if you're Thurman, you know, you're, you're not taking any chances here. This is going to be a lot of putting distance between them, you know, you uh, flicking that jab out there. Don't take any unnecessary risk. Don't try to knock this guy out. He's clearly made of cement. So don't waste your time. I mean, on my card officially, I've given Lopez two rounds. I could see him winning three, possibly four. But you're talking about him not, you know, coming alive till very late in the fight, was knocked down. It does, you know, voting on the scorecards. You don't want to say Thurman can afford to take this round off because you never can tell. Uh, however, I would highly advise Thurman to do as minimal as possible to win this round. Right. Use your reach to use the reach to your advantage. Use uh you know stay stay separated. Don't get drawn into firefights. No. If you see the opening for a big punch, just land one and get out of the way. Okay. And he starts off, you know, peppering and getting away. That's what he needs to do. And keep those hands up. 
Not a lot of confidence in Hosezito when when Thurman's dancing around like that. Oh, he took one square in the jaw there. There's a lot of hesitation. See, what I'm noticing is that there's a lot of hesitation from Hosezito Lopez once Thurman gets on his bicycle. You know, like he's like he's ta- like like he's a hunter, kind of you know taking time to try to set up that perfect shot instead of instead as you said before, using your feints, using your jabs, tr- you know, trying to trying to counter the the defense of Thurman. No, L- Lopez at this point really seems uninterested in trying to have that fight. He just wants to wait for that moment when Thurman sets and then initiate action. And the problem with that is you're waiting on the other guy. You're not being proactive. It's a very similar problem we saw with Adrian Broner against Manny Pacquiao. Right. Adrian Broner wanted to wait for the perfect counterpunch opportunity, and you know, for ninety-five percent of that fight, it didn't come. Right. It's, it's essentially, if you're waiting for the guy to get winded or something, or finally stop, you know, he's not going to all of a sudden stop defending himself. No, and if you're not forcing him to use more energy than he wants to, you're not going to tire him out either. And it, it's just a shame because. Lopez has had and created opportunities. He just hasn't had the idea to do it the whole fight. We are down to our last minute of, of uh, the round 12. This is it. Final minute of the fight. Throw caution to the wind, Hussazito. Throw out whatever you got. The kitchen sink, marble, sandwiches, anything you've got in your pants. And to his credit, he looks like he's trying to, but you got to believe it's just probably too little too late here. Uh, you know, he had opportunities and he let them go by. And Keith Thurman, to his credit, survived some very, very difficult moments here and has come through, you know, fighting back. It's not as though he's running. It's not as though he's not trying to fight. He's fought back and he's fought back effectively and turned it back into the type of fight that benefits him and does not benefit Lopez. And again, he's, he's landing combinations. He's making Lopez move. He's making him work. And I think he's actually probably outlanded Lopez by at least a two-to-one margin in this round. Uh, and I haven't seen Jose land anything real effective or scary. You can't be saved by the bell, but it doesn't matter. All right. And that is the conclusion of our fight there. They fought to the, very, uh, to, they fought to the bell. Uh, a great action fight, a great fight for TV. I think if you're a casual viewer and you're watching this, this was not in any way boring. You know, these two went head to head, a lot of movement. Uh, I would say this was a successful night for all around for Premier Boxing uh, Championship. Yeah, I would absolutely agree with that. Uh, and this is why you got to love a guy like Jose Cita Lopez, despite being seemingly outclassed in every way on paper against an elite level talent he came in and he made it a fight uh he didn't win and this is one of the cases where he actually did lose a fight clearly he's gotten some bad deals this time but he he fought with everything he had and uh he made a great account of himself so uh as we go to commercial here my question to you is he want i believe thurman said he wants one more tune-up fight before you know which which will take him into 20 one more fight for 2019, and then, you know, his next fight will be after that will be in 2020. Who do you see on the short list of opponents in 2020? Well, one of the guys that they were trying to match him up with before he had gotten hurt was Jesse Vargas. Um, and Jesse's kind of that middle-of-the-road type of fight that uh, I could see him taking. There's also, you know, the potential of maybe Adrian Broner, who could use a payday and is very clearly – not an elite level welterweight. Um, there's some other guys out there, maybe a Thomas Delorme, who, you know, the only guy who's really decisively beaten him uh, recently is Terrence Crawford, who is obvi- very obviously one of the pound for pound best fighters in the sport. So there, there are some options there. Uh, anyone that the WBA is going to say is a mandatory challenger? I have not looked at the WBA rankings, um, so I don't know who they're going to say he has to fight immediately. I'm sure they have, you know, their own choice as to who they want to line up in the title fight for whatever reason. Uh, And, you know, just for the heck of it, 
Let's pull up their rankings. So WBA rankings, last updated uh, December 2018. And what we'll do is we'll pull up their welterweight rankings. And as we pull those up, uh, Alexander Be Besputin of Russia is their number one contender. Jesse Vargas, not surprisingly, is in those rankings. He is number two, so that could easily be a fight we see happen next. Uh, you have Jamal James, Igidurus Kalavikusikas, Amir Khan of England, who is, if I'm not mistaken, taking a fight with uh, Errol Spence very soon. And we are back on PBC. Let's take a look at what the highlights are here before the judges come in. A lot of the early good work from Keith Thurman, that counter hook that dropped Lopez. Lopez, incidentally, was number seven in the WBA rankings prior to this fight. I'd like to see uh, Keith Thurman fight Amir Khan. I think that would be make for a good TV fight. You know, depending on where Khan's at. Khan has talked about retirement. Uh, Khan has talked about, like I said, potentially fighting uh, in his home country in an all-English uh, fight with the uh, last last uh, English champion, uh, who I'm blanking on, he fought uh, Gennady Golovkin and gave a really good accounting of himself before his eye was shattered. Uh, why am I blanking on his name? I'm having a brain freeze here. Uh, Kel Brook, I'm sorry. And we're hearing the score totals. Our score there is a draw. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I feel like all, you know, whenever we do these live, whenever we do these live commentaries... You know, it should be, and the and the scorecards brought to you by the musical Anything Goes. Well, Steve Weisfeld and Max Schreck both scored it uh, in the range of 116 and 117 to 111, uh, okay. which is, a, you know, a fair margin for each of them. They gave Lopez one of those one or two swing rounds that we talked about, uh, but I don't know how the other judge could have come up with a draw, especially when there was a knockdown in the fight. Uh, I didn't want I don't, to... Yeah, I didn't want to be really snarky about this and, and make jokes. You know, I did the I I, I got it out once. You know, one twenty to uh, to zero, Canelo, um, and I, but I and, I and I didn't want to make a big deal about you know the controversies with scoring. But hey, how do you come up with a draw? Like, what fight are you watching? I have no idea. But uh, on the plus side, uh, for those of you gamblers out there. Uh, for anybody who follows boxing and knows the level of toughness that Josecito Lopez brings, if you bought on Keith Thurman winning on points instead of a knockout, which was actually a two to one uh, underdog, you did well as I did. And that brings us to our conclusion for tonight's live commentary. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. There's going to be a lot more of them as the year progresses. Uh, just a couple of quick notes. Next Saturday, we have Sergey Ko Sergei Kovalev versus Elader Alvarez 2 on ESPN at 10 p.m. Uh, Pat and I will bring you the main event of that card sometime in the 10 or 11 o'clock hour. So check that out. Boy, that'll be fantastic. And then right back here on Fox, we have Leo Santa Cruz versus Miguel Flores. 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Again, between 9.30 and 10-ish will be the main event. We'll bring you live commentary of that fight as well. Cannot wait for that first fight. Super exciting. Barn burner. Uh, this fight probably going to be no exception. Um, you don't have Showtime, do you? I do. Oh. Uh, well, there's the Davis versus uh, Abner Maraz fight if you're interested as well. Gervonta and Abner Mars, that'll be interesting. I know Leo Santa Cruz has a fight coming up. Uh, always great to see LCS involved. Yes, Leo Santa Cruz versus Miguel Flores. Yeah, there's some there's some very good stuff on the horizon for 
for us to take a look at. So we'll keep bringing you these live uh, these live commentaries. Eventually, we'll get back in the habit of also going in the Wayback Machine and looking at some uh, Universal Wrestling Federation matches. Uh, some old school wrestling. We knew we were doing a bunch of those last year. We'll we'll bring that back again this year as well. I opened up the door for uh, Pat and Jed if they want to record anything on the network. So, well, I'm sure we'll have some surprises as the year goes on. But in the meantime, next week we've got a pair of Runaway shows. We've got <coughs> source material: The Complete Runaways Volume Two. So, uh, TV party tonight for Runaway Season Two. A Pale Horse Named Death has a new album. We'll review it on the Metal Hammer of Doom. Andrew Graham and his lovely wife will be on for a second TV party. I have a lot of TV to watch this weekend. Uh, the Crown, Season 2. And then, as we said before, it's Saturday night. It's a ball fight, so bring your bats and your brooms. It's Sergey Kovalev, Aleda Alvarez on ESPN, 10 p.m. Be there or be square. Listen to Pat and I bring you all the live commentary. Pat, go ahead. Uh... If you've got, I think you've got a Super Bowl plug you need to do. Whatever else you got going on, and then we'll get out of here. Yes. Yeah, so this week, uh, be sure to listen to the Rattlers and Broadcasting Network for myself and Jesse Starcher on the Yahoo Pigskin Pick'em Pro Football Challenge podcast. Uh, we've been off a few weeks during the playoffs, obviously holidays and a lot of things going on. Uh, but you can hear myself and Jesse talk about the season, uh, the Super Bowl itself, and of course my prediction which some may call a prediction, I call it a fact from the start of the season, that I would, of course, win the league with not only the highest point total, but also the best pick em record. Lo and behold, I did exactly that. All right. For the to- the uh, Mr. Toxic Masculinity, Pat Mullen, the punchy pugilist in his own right, I am your mandated reporter, Mr. Mark Rattledge. We look forward to offending you in the future.